Hello, Blue Collar Preppers. This is Aaron Pellet. We have here the April 2015 Apocalypse Box. This is unboxing number five for those of you keeping track. Right off the top, I'm going to apologize in case this video isn't the best quality. I had some problems with my laptop. I had to reformat, reinstall everything. I may not have gotten the settings quite right. If I didn't, I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments and I'll fix them for next time. But if there's a problem with either audio quality or the video isn't up to par, I apologize. You'll just have to forgive me and carry on. So with that said, let's look at what is in uh, April Pocket Box, shall we? Skill, skill challenge, like always. Table of contents, like always. And right off the top, we see something very interesting. It's a Backwoodsman magazine featuring this handsome fellow, Creek Stewart. He's the one who invented the Apocalypse Box, and it's autographed. And this isn't just pure ego. You've got a nice big interview with him. And in addition to that, you have a lot of other interesting quality articles on survival, homesteading, self-reliance, and things like that. So in addition to finding out more about the man who started the Apocalypse Box, you've got an interesting resource, and maybe you will want to subscribe afterwards. Note to Creek, maybe you should offer some sort of special where anyone who uh, hashtags Apocalypse Box might get a break on their subscription. Just a thought. All right, so let's look at what else we have here. The very nice box full of goodies like we've come to expect. So we've got here the Apocaseed Vault, it says, and uh, hand-packed by Ur Urban Farmer Seeds, which I assume is a company. Uh, the Apocaseed Vault is a mini portable fresh-packed seed kit with a shelf life of over three years. And then they say that if you store it in a cool place like a basement or a uh, freezer, you can extend it indefinitely. And yes, uh, Brandywine Tomato, California Wonder Pepper, Muncher Cucumber, Blue Lake Bush Bean, Golden Bantam Corn, and Sugar and Peas. They're all in here. And um, because these are heirloom seeds, when you grow the fruit and you eat it and you save the seeds, dry it, you can plant them again. I I do have a bit of a concern that the heat encountered when these were shipped may have decreased the shelf life somewhat. I don't know. But this is valued at uh, $10. Oh, and the Backwoodsman magazine was 5 because I've been keeping a running tally of all these. All right, the Thompson Survival Snare Kit. There are actually two of them. There's a, a large and a small. And these were issued to Air Force pilots during World War II. And so these are survival snares where you can capture small game like squirrels, rabbits, things like that. Um, and they are, I, I've heard very good things about them. I haven't used them. I'm a bit of a wuss. I I realize I probably should do hunting and trapping. I can't quite bring myself to kill an animal. Um, I have no problem with people who hunt or trap. I just can't overcome that personal hurdle. It's my own problem to deal with. But I've heard very good things about uh, Thompson's survival snares, and they're supposed to be uh, very efficient. As you can see, they've got a small form factor. You could put them in cargo pants. So... Shouldn't have a problem putting them in a bug out kit. Uh, these are listed as $15. The Kellum Camp Knife. And this particular item comes with a certificate of origin. It certifies that this is a, uh, an authentic Finnish Puko. 
So Kellum must be the name of the company. Um, in much the same way that the the Frost Mora. Mora is a Swedish knife, but the company that makes them is Frost. A little bit of trivia. So this is very similar to a Mora, and if I had been thinking ahead, I would have brought my Mora from home, and I didn't. And I apologize. There's a lot of similarities in that they're very good knives. They are under... Well, this one's listed at $16. Most Moras, uh, the inexpensive ones, I can't call them cheap, are anywhere from 12 to 15 This one's a little bit more. It's got plastic sheath, plastic handle. The big difference here is the tip. And again, I'm kicking myself for not bringing the Mora because the big difference is that the Mora is pointed. In fact, it's got a cutout right about there that uh, it, that dips down, and it is very definitely a pointing, stabbing sort of tool. You can use it as a weapon. I wouldn't recommend it, but it's a sharp enough knife. You could use it for self-defense. This, by nature of having a more rounded tip, takes it out of the realm of self-defense, unless it's an absolute last ditch, but that does mean you've got a lot more tool aspects because you can more easily, well, if you're trying to carve a bowl or something, you can get, oh, I've got to do this without cutting myself, but, you know, you, you, if you're trying to carve something out, you can more easily get that in there and produce that rounded cut. So it's it's nice. I like it. Uh, it didn't come as sharp as the Mora either. And people who know me know I like my knife sharp. I like to be able to take a piece of paper and just go and cut off pieces. And this didn't come quite sharp enough. So if you really like scary sharp knives like I do, you'll need to work on it a little bit. But it doesn't take much. Just a little bit of honing, and this thing works fine. Oh. Neat thing about the handle, sheath, whatever, vocabulary fail. All right, so there's two ways of carrying this. Like this, this will fit over a belt. But if you wrestle this off, turn it around, put it the other way. I have a stand camera here. All right, well, now you can hang this from a button. So you've got multiple ways of carrying it, and that's kind of cool. I like that. To quote uh, Jane from Serenity, I just get excitable to my options. Next one, the Light Cube Extreme. And most of you will be thinking, that's a 9-volt battery. And, well, it is. That's the, that's the Light Cube right there. What it does is it takes your 9-volt battery and turns it into a flashlight. And it has two modes. Yeah, that's, that's high and that's low. And, well, I think that's nifty. Doesn't take a whole lot of space and it turns the battery into the flashlight body. And just the flashlight itself is very, very light, almost negligible in weight. Cool. That's listed as $7 for those of you keeping track at home. Let me see about getting a little more in camera. There we go. Next on the inventory list are things called Apaka Bands. And they are a variant of Ranger Bands, if anyone knows what they are. This is basically a very strong type of rubber bands. Um, I believe the typical Ranger bands were made from cutting sections of bicycle inner tube. You've got these. There are six of them. I know there are only five here. Bear with me. But they come in red and black. And, you know, they're kind of cute. They're useful. I'm sure you can find a use for stronger than usual rubber bands. Eh. I'll get to that missing six band in a moment. 
Make your own luck patch, $5. Continuing the tradition where Creek likes to put in a patch in just about every box. He also likes bandanas, scarves, things like that. This one is called a buffalo scarf. It's listed as $15. It is 100% cotton. It is 42 inches by 42 inches. It looks a lot like schmog, in fact. Perhaps it really is a schmog, and he's decided to call it a buffalo scarf instead. And schmogs are wonderful things. Every prepper should have several of them. You can use them as bandanas. You can use them as slings. You can do 101 things with them. I'll, uh, I'll put a link in the comments below about all the things you can do. Yeah, this is definitely a schmog. It's also in the way now. I'm not sure that it's actually worth $15. I've seen schmogs for much less. I mean, it, it's good quality. It feels like good quality. I haven't torn it apart, obviously. But I've felt similar quality for less. I don't know. Really, with a lot of these things, the only way you'll know for certain is if you take them out into the bush and beat the hell out of them. And... I haven't done that because if I beat the hell out of it, it doesn't look all shiny and new for an unboxing. Okay, so I mentioned that last six, the pocket band, and that is securing this together. And inside this tin is a char cloth kit, and that is the skills challenge for this month where you are going to be making char cloth using this kit. And so what you've got here is you've got a flint arrowhead and a bit of steel that looks like a mustache because, uh, as Creek notes in the, in the uh, content list, he's a fan of all things manly. So, okay. Uh, so the skills challenge will be, well, first you've got to make a spark with flint and steel. And uh, then you're going to be making char cloth using this, these bits of cotton. And I don't know if anyone knows how to make char cloth. One of my contributors on Blue Collar Prepping, Loki Dude, wrote a very good article about it. But really, this contains all you need here. You've got your little swatches of cotton, and you do need this container. And you punch a hole in it, no more than uh, an eighth of an inch. And you get a fire going, and you put this on the fire, and smoke comes out. And when the smoke stops coming out, you take this off the fire, you let it cool. Don't open it until it's cool, because the last thing you want to do is open this up and let all sorts of oxygen rush in to cloth that's trying to char, because they'll. there's a very strong chance, if not outright certainty, that they will catch on fire, and then you've lost all that effort. But if you let it cool, you take them out, you should have uh, charred cloth that is delicate but not brittle, and that is fantastic for uh, taking a spark, holding a spark, and then you can use it uh, to make a fire bundle. This is not tender in the sense that it'll immediately burn, but it will keep a spark so that you can then build a fire around it. This kit is listed as being $18. Uh, I think that it would be a lot less if Creek hadn't had the, the high carbon steel laser cut in the form of a mustache. But, you know, I'll allow the man his whimsy. And finally, a paracord wrapped fishing kit. And that's listed as $8. So as you can see, it fits in the palm of my hand. I have small hands. And it is supposed to have everything you need to catch, clean, and cook a survival meal on the go. 
I had contemplated whether or not I was going to do this, and I decided, what the heck? Let's see if it doesn't take too much effort. I'll just go ahead and open this. Oh, another note to Creek. You know what would be really cool to go along with this? Instructions on how to rewrap it. Because there are some people, like me, who are going to be nosy and want to see what's in it, but then they're going to want to wrap it back up again. So, a URL to a video showing how to wrap it, that would be really cool. Please include something like that in the future. Thank you. Okay, so as you can see, this is obviously not something you want to do in an emergency. I'm not sure why you'd need to get to a fishing kit very quickly. It's not like there's ever a you know, fishing 911. But it does take a bit of time. And at this point, I'm basically just stalling so that you have something interesting, semi-interesting to listen to while you watch me unwrap this. I know, it's thrilling. If you are dissatisfied with the content of this podcast, please let me know and I will refund your money immediately. <laughs> Okay, maybe not almost there. Maybe quite a bit to go. Okay, so I'm just going to keep talking while I do this. Uh, this is listed as being $8. Now, a running motif I have uh, about the Apaka boxes is uh, cost versus value. And these things work out, to, well, they're, they're $50 plus shipping, so it really works out to $60. And so they come every two months, so I just regard it as 30 bucks every month that I put away to get cool, interesting prepping stuff in the mail. I tally up the contents list, and I find out what they're supposed to be worth. And this month... The total comes out to 102, which is maybe a little high. As I said before, I don't know that the, the schmog is quite worth that much. Um, laser cutting the steel into a, a silly mustache could be an additional expense. But when it comes down to it, you have bought hundred dollars worth of equipment for sixty dollars and it's up to you whether to, to determine whether or not that is a good value for your money so far I have been happy with what I've gotten and you know in the months I've been doing this I don't think I've ever heard from anyone telling me that Based on these reviews, they've actually gone ahead and subscribed to a pocket box. And I would really like to know if that's happened. So please, folks, uh, drop me a line. Let me know. All right. So this is the key ring that the carabiner was attached to. And it's a little knife and a, a scaler. Let me get that close enough. Don't know if that probably won't focus very well. But it's it's a small blade. I mean I can get my finger through it. I'm small. I don't know if most you know you know big beefy guys probably can't. It's eh. It's okay, it's sharp-ish. I'd 
want to sharpen the heck out of it, but again, that's just me. So we've got something foil wrapped here. Dun, 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 dun. I suppose you can, if you catch a fish, you can wrap it in the aluminum foil and then cook it. I'm trying not to tear the foil, and that appears to be foolish. Okay, screw it, we'll do it live. All right, so bag of goodies. We've got hooks and fishing line. I don't know how much fishing line. It doesn't say. I don't know. Anyone who fishes, you can estimate. Of course, if you really need more fishing line, you can start pulling strands out of the paracord. And how much is this anyway? Not a whole lot. It, uh, it's not a whole lot of line. I would say it's probably... Oh, here, I'll stand up and measure it. Okay, I'm a little over five foot three. This is my height. It's not quite ten feet. I can't double it up. Yeah, I'm going to say it's eight feet because it comes to my chin. All right, let's see what else we have here. Oh, Got to do this on camera. So we've got, uh, okay, cotton swabs. And, oh, there's a fire starter. So this isn't just for catching the fish, it's for cooking it as well. So... With this, you can make the spark. You can set the cotton swab on fire. And you've got uh, weights and uh, bobbers, buoys, whatever the proper term is. So it's kind of a curiosity as far as I'm concerned. There's some interesting stuff in here, but the amount of time it took to get it open, and then, oh, it's going to be such a pain to put it back together, assuming I can. And then, as per usual with the Apoca box, the material here can be used to start a fire. They've changed the recipe. It used to be some sort of shredded wood, and this now is shredded cardboard. Yes, I'm aware that cardboard is a paper product, and therefore it's still wood, but the consistency is different. This is a lot thinner. This actually feels more papery as opposed to the other one, which was actual... It just felt woody. So... That's really neither here nor there, just an observation. I am never getting this stuff back into the foil. It's just not going to happen. <clears throat> okay, then. That was the April 2015 Pocket Box Contents Kit. Uh, some of the things uh, this time were not as cool, but there were others that were a little more cool. 
So overall, I am happy with how this works out. Um, you know, people who know me should know that I'm cheap enough that if this stops being fun, interesting, if I feel like I'm no longer getting my value, uh, I'll, I'll stop buying it. I'll stop doing that. So for right now, at least, I am enjoying what I'm getting because who doesn't enjoy getting presents in the mail? So thank you for listening to me ramble. I know I rambled a lot more this time. I will see you in two months for the June Apocabox. Hopefully there will be some cool things in there, and hopefully next time I won't ramble quite so much. So thank you for stopping by. Please continue to visit my blog, bluecollarprepping.blogspot.com. We've got new articles five days a week. And leave a comment here. Leave a comment there. Leave a comment on my other blog if you don't want to go through the hassle of registering. But please give comments. I'm a blogger. I live for the attention, to be completely honest, because otherwise, why would I be doing this? Thank you for your time. Have a great weekend. Bye.